It's good to be back with you all again this week. I'm glad you'll have me again. Glad to have you. Last week was really good. I crowded a lot into it, but that's the way I cook. It's the way I set a table. <laughs> it's the way I live. <laughs> so I just thank you for your patience and just being able to grasp the intent of what God wants to say through another part of the body at a particular time so that it unifies us, so that it knits us, so that it makes us all in this together. And last time we talked about just the critical nature of understanding that faith is what makes up a testimony. And faith as well as testimony starts as a seed and it has to be cultivated in a way so that it grows in order to produce fruit. But that's not the end. Because with the fruit that is cultivated through our faith and shown out through our testimony has a purpose. And that purpose fits inside of a mystery. And it is the mystery of God's will. Most of the time when things are being cultivated within us by faith, the things that form testimony, we don't know really what he's doing. Because most of the time he works in a way so that we will, by faith, grow in trusting him and obeying him in the smallest of things. So that that small thing can multiply. It can increase. It can grow. So that by the time you get to fruitfulness... You get that in a measure. You don't get all your fruitfulness to start with. We talked last week about this grape, this vineyard that we have, these grape vines at the farm. And the first time we had our first harvest, it was three grapes. We were so excited with three grapes. The next year, it was more than we could handle almost. So the point that I really wanted to lead up to for this week was to bring something really to bear about what that last segment what does it mean for something to come into its fullness what does it mean if God wants to to create a fruitfulness in your life and then what is the purpose of that what does he want to do with that fruit with grapes we make jam we make jelly we eat off the out of the bowl we do it in a lot of different ways but the fruit that God develops and cultivates within us is an overcoming fruit that means as its outcome it's meant to overcome anything in this world it's meant to bring about a people if you will that can stand no matter what and they can actually show out the truth of the matter And most of the time when we're caught in the places of where we feel weak in faith, sometimes you might actually be your strongest there because your dependence upon God is so necessary. So you can't go uh, by your emotions to lead you when God is cultivating faith. When God is forming a testimony within us, You cannot go by your emotions. Your emotions should be following the triumphs. Your emotions should be following the praise and worship of what God is doing. But I'm telling you, our enemy sneaks in with a lot of emotional aspects of how we're made, and he wants to just misuse it. He wants us to be deflated against God. He wants us to kind of be disappointed with God because we don't feel certain things. When we work in the vineyard, I can tell you when it's hot, when the ground needs work on it, that, we don't feel particularly good those days. But the day of harvest and the day when those things have come to what they've been given for, oh, we're happy. We're happy, and there's a joy there. One thing that I wanted to bring to bear today is that the difference between... Let's go to Hebrews. I don't want to go too far without putting some word in here. Let's go to um, let's go to Ephesians one to start with. Let's back up to last week and kind of lay this groundwork. Chapter one, 
chapter 1, verse, um, let's do 9, no, uh, 7, excuse me. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will. The mystery of his will according to his kind intention. Which he purposed in him with a view to an administration suitable or proper, if you will, corresponds, fits perfectly to the fullness of the times. I added some other stuff in there. That is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heaven and things upon the earth. And then you skip over to verse 17. Excuse me, 15. For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you here at FOC, and your love for all the saints, I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so you may know what is the hope of the calling. That's a really critical point. To know what the hope of his calling. That calling, that word for calling, literally is an invitation. That's what that means. The calling on your life is an invitation. But you have to RSVP. You have to agree with it. You have to understand it. You have to, as God reveals it to you, you don't want to be mimicking someone else's calling. Your calling is unique to who you have been carefully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. And it's meant to fit in with others that are carefully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. The other aspect of needing this enlightenment, of needing um, the understanding uh, that's necessary for the eyes of our heart to be open, is that we might know what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And I can tell you that those riches right there are our testimonies. They're our testimonies. That's how we're rich. We may not be rich in the world, but we're rich in understanding the love of God and how it has been given and cultivated within us to flow out from us so that it might be light, so that it might be truth, especially in the places that oppose it, especially in the midst of and in spite of opposition, especially in those places. It's where it's formed. It's where it's cultivated. And then also, what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? That power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about when he raised Jesus from the dead. That power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead is the very power of God at work in our life to raise us up out of and into. That's powerful to me. That means there's nothing about my life or about your life that is greater and, and stronger than the seed that has been sown in here. What brings the variance in harvest is always how you cultivate the soil. How do you make way for that seed to grow and develop? It has to be nurtured. You cultivate it. It says in Corinthians that we are God's field, God's building. Those are two different paradigms. But it literally says we are God's cultivated land. That means he hasn't just thrown his seed in any old place and hope you catch it. It is sent to us. It's given to us in a season and a time so it can take root downward and bear fruit upward. That's powerful. It's powerful. But today I want to wrap it up between the fruitfulness and the fullness. 
There has to be a conversion. We all know conversion from when we're little in the Lord. And he comes to us and we're converted. We're brought out of darkness into light. And that's a done deal. That's a done deal. When he comes, it's a done deal. Nothing can take you out of his hand from that point on. But his desire and the mystery of his will is that it would be cultivated in a way to bring up a fruitfulness in your life, in your life. And that if he can work in your life, then he, begin, he can begin to work in bigger ways. And those bigger ways are always who are we together. Not who is this guy over here at the house and who's this one over here. with, But who we are together. And it will reflect a, a glory as well. We have our own individual places of faith being cultivated. Testimonies being formed. That serve us and will serve us to the day we go be with Jesus. But it's also being given a, a, a greater purpose. And that it, it would be rightly related and connected to others who also bear that testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what communion is. A body that was broken. You have a portion. You have a portion. You have a portion. And it's given in those portions so one can lay hold of it right here inside himself in a personal testimony then you bring that so that God can build his house with it so God can connect the body as it pleases him this fullness that God has for us in this day is suitable to be adequate for what this day is and this day has never been here before this day that we're in has never been here before. And God has a moment of conversion where, you, where he's going, it's a move of his spirit where he's going to begin to take your personal testimony and work it into a corporate or a collective testimony of something that he needs in this time from this church, from this family, from this gathering. He's doing this everywhere. And he wants things in, in, in the flavor, if you will, and in the purpose for what those testimonies have been joined together for. That fullness and that conversion is where the war is a lot of times. There's a war involved in it. There was a war before they went into the promised land. In fact, one generation didn't even get in there. And the scripture tells us, let's turn to that Hebrews 4. So it's not a matter of not being fruitful. It's not a matter of God not working in our life. But when God wants to do something in a collective way because it's time for it and because he needs it as a demonstration of something he has on his mind, when he brings things into those places, it's critical that we understand as the, in the church what the context of all these testimonies, all these giftings, all these calls, what all this has been given for. It says right here... Um, in verse chapter 4, Therefore, let us fear, lest while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you should seem to have come short of it, meaning that you simply have your own individual, but the rest comes in the fullness. That's where the rest of God is. You can know it individually, but we're talking about a corporate testimony. We're talking about something God wants to do with his church. For he says, Indeed, we've had good news preached to us, just as they also, and it's talking about the, the wilderness and the people of God, that whole nation. It says, but the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. But the literal interpretation of that phrase is that they, that, that word did not profit them, that word of hearing, because they were not, in faith with those who believe, meaning they weren't connected in a way that all those individual testimonies, those individual growths and that fruitfulness could not yield something for the sake of a nation entering into a promise. There's something God has for this house that is special for this house. And there's something here that he has been working for a good while. And that 
I mean, you can look around. All of you have a testimony of something God has done for you. Some of you have testimonies. You have testimonies that are critical for the big picture. You have testimonies that are critical for the authority of God being revealed in the earth. Not just to us among ourselves, but to principalities, powers of darkness, forces of wickedness, corruptness. That's what the big picture is of why corporately we have something to offer as the church to the world. And that's why some of our trials have been so excruciating. Because God needs strength of testimony. He needs power of testimony. And you can't get the authority that God has set for this time, for the administration of this time, without there having been something that has been sacrificed and given over to him to do it just the way he wanted to do it. Instead of the way we wished he would have done it. God is bringing a people to this everywhere. This is not just here. But I have a history here. I know some of these testimonies. I've been a part of some of it. And I can tell you there's been pain in a lot of places. But when we meet the conversion between just church agenda for formation till we get to the purpose for which church was formed, which is the kingdom of God, when you make that transition from here to here, all that pain will be converted into a joy. It will be converted into a power to rejoice and look at what God has done. Nobody will be on the sidelines trying to figure out what in the world God was doing then because he himself will join it. He himself will complete it. He himself will reveal it. The earth is, is actually in the, births of pain, uh, the birth pangs of childbirth trying to bring forth these testimonies as a unified expression of who Jesus Christ is. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If we can come into this unified expression of fullness, of the testimony of Jesus Christ, it will prophesy. It will raise the dead. It'll make things that have been lost cause them to be found. Things that were down will now come up. This is the power of God that's been promised to us. And he first said, can I please do it in you first? Can I do it in you first? Will you come follow me? Will you let me, will you let me lead you in a way that I can do what I'm not necessarily going to tell you up front? But whatever I tell you is going to be enough. You won't have to go looking for something more. You believe what I'm saying and it will be enough because he will add he will add the power to bear because we believe it that's what brings our triumph is his power to bear because we're believing it unbelief actually hides in what we believe he's sneaky like the enemy's sneaky like that he'll throw in some unbelief right in the midst of all of our doctrines that's what he does. It's what he's always done. And this day's been reserved. He's going to do it more than normal. Because we're at a critical moment of fullness. Not only for our nation, but for the world. We're close to a point of an understanding of the gospel of the kingdom. And all nations will come under that. And so God right here, as simple as all this is, as simple as our lives are, as, as connected as we are just eating together, you know, having fun together, in the midst of all of that which God has given to his church, there is a work going on to prepare us for the day that we are in. And this next generation, now I'm a little older than most of you in here. So my generation, I've been through from the 70s on, okay, so I've got some history. Like I messed some stuff up for y'all, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but this is why we, we give glory to the great Redeemer. There are some things we just didn't know what we were doing. 
And there's going to be some things in this next generation you're just not going to know what you're doing. But the thing I can offer to you, it's not about all the you knowing everything. It's about the one in whom you love. It's about the one in whom you trust. It's about the one whom you are following, no matter where he leads. I love the worship songs. There's so those worship songs this morning, it, it's declaring it. It doesn't matter if all of this falls apart, if all of this changes and we don't recognize any of it. Right over here, there will be a strength. Because each of us, in some measure, have come under the work of the Holy Spirit so that we did not know many times what he was doing. But thanks be to God who always leads us in his triumph. So that what he, the way he leads us through becomes a declaration to those that are perishing and to those who are living. It's making a declaration to everything. That God is victorious in our life. And that comes by responding to him. And saying, Lord, do with me what you will. Do what you will. It takes a moment of consecration to do that. Consecration is a good thing. It's not particularly comfortable sometimes. Just like repentance is not particularly comfortable. You know, there is a, a, a real hovering of repentance right now over our nation over our lives and he's saying like we said last week about that grapevine that deep deep pruning that master pruner that came and cut our grapevines there's a deep pruning that God is going to do but it's because the summation of these times needs a greater glory because God has something to say and demonstrate through the church through FOC He's deposited heavily in this place. Heavily. There's things some of us don't even know. Some of it we may never know. Some of it we may just heard about a little bit of this, that. But the deep places that God has formed for himself in your heart is going to be very valuable in this place. And there's going to be an authority that's going to rise up. Not to show off, because God doesn't have to prove anything. But it'll come out of a compassion. It'll come out of a zeal of the Lord to accomplish his own word of what he said. And that one word that God has said that's louder than every other word, do we know what that word is? That he did through, through Jesus, do we know what that one word is? Resurrection, which is life. We're in a day of life and death. And death, do what you will. You've already done it one time, and there's victory there. There's nothing we have to be afraid of about death. It's about laying hold of him in a way that he can demonstrate life through us. That we would be a people that would trust him. That we would be a people that could bow before him. That we could be a people to say, no matter what this day holds, this day will be a day of victory. But it's going to take all of us. It's going to take all of us. I'm going to go back to Isaiah 55, which I read last week. I just want to cap this off with here. Verse. It says, for my thought, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. And that word at the top, at the deepest, at the broadest, at the uh, greatest sense of accomplishment we can think of, that word is Christ Jesus. That word is Jesus. He sent him, and he will accomplish all things through him and for him and by him. And it will show. It will show. 
So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we're in a time, Lord. Father, that we're in a time that we actually need to say, come near. We're actually in a time, Father, that we need to release even more of our hearts and say, do with me as you will. Father, we're in a time where many things are hinging upon the testimony of Jesus that will begin to prophesy to a world that is full of darkness. God, I'm asking, Lord, that this morning, and especially in this gathering, Father, that each person would find a new strength to come, just like they come and they bring their offering, Lord. I pray they'd come and bring their life to the altar, Father, that it could be an offering given to you, so out of that offering, God, you could bring forth the abundance of what this house has been given for, what it's been formed for. And, Father, that there would end up with one testimony, and that is the testimony of Jesus Christ. God, that it would have all the application and all the administration that would be suitable to the fullness of this time. This new time that you're bringing this church into, Lord, there's a new time here. There's a threshold here. There's an open door here, Father. So we ask, Father, that you would bring every offering of heart and life and mind, God. You'd bring all of that to bear so that you might be properly administered in this day and in this time for your glory. God, we thank you. We thank you. And Father, as... Go ahead. Are you going to bless the elements or are you going to pray? Yeah, go ahead. You can. I want to share with you guys a message from David. I just got this. It says, Hi, church family. I must say I miss you guys and being there this morning. I hear Carol is really bringing it. To which I greatly rejoice, although I expected that. Exclamation point. Thank you, Carol. Exclamation, exclamation point. I've had more than enough vacation. Can't wait to get home. We will be back tomorrow evening. Pray for safe travels and no sickness, please. We have been blessed so far. I love you. May he bless you mightily with his glory. Triple exclamation. Now, now, this is Jess Park. Thank you. That was amazing. Last week was like tearing it all up. This week was like smoothing it out, getting the seeds in there. Deep stuff. Thank you. Um, just good like only good the Lord is amazing he's amazing in all that he does for us 